So now we got another circuit where I use a 555 timer to control the position of the servo. But instead of an adjustable position, we got two adjustable positions instead of uh, a range. And so there we go. Uh, we got the second one when I press the button. So right now we got 14,000 ohms of resistance setting how high, how long the uh, pulse is. More resistance, longer pulse. We're going around the 10K resistor. So now we got 4,000 ohms of resistance. So shorter pulse and it moves the position of the servo right there. And uh, our signal is coming from the output. We got to power the uh, servo with uh, those um, making our way there. So, in any case, uh, 100,000 ohm resistor, 0.22 microfarad capacitor should give us somewhere around uh, 20 milliseconds of uh, low time, approximate. They don't have to be exact. And then uh, we got the 1K resistor, 4K resistor, 10K right now. If I press the button, we go around the 10K resistor. So, we got a total of 4,000 ohms of resistance. So now here's the schematic for our servo that has two positions based on whether we are pressing the switch or not. Again, I'm using the uh, SG90 uh, servo right there. And uh, so there's about 20 milliseconds where it's low, you know, approximate right there. And then you got pulses that are about one to two milliseconds that determine the position. The length of the pulse right there is uh, what determines the position. So yeah, you just give it a signal there. I'm not sure how much current you got to provide, uh, not much, um, the power is uh, provided for the servo through the power pins. But in any case, here you can see, um, for uh, the discharging, the low time, we have a 100K resistor. So, you know, a fair amount of resistance there, only a 0.22 microfarad capacitor right there. It's not polarized, even though I drew one on there. So there you can see, we got 14,000 ohms of resistance with this combination of resistors. But if I close the switch, now we only got uh, 4K of resistance. So with the switch open, much longer pulse. 